On September 24, 1762, a British fleet of eight ships of the line, three frigates, and four store ships with a force of 6,839 regulars, sailors and marines, sailed into Manila Bay from Madras, India. From September 24, 1762 to October 6, 1762, the British forces fought with the Spanish forces in and around Manila. This was known as the Battle of Manila of 1762. The British won, leading to the occupation of the Spanish colonial capital of Manila and the nearby principal port of Cavite for 20 months by the British Empire. This episode in Philippine colonial history is known as the British occupation of Manila from 1762 to 1764. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe. Hit the subscribe button below, and hit also the notification bell so that you won't miss any of my new videos. The Battle of Manila of 1762 and the British occupation of Manila from 1762 to 1764 was an extension of the larger Seven Years' War between Britain and France, but which came to involve Spain. The Seven Years' War from 1756 to 1763, was a global conflict arising largely from issues left unresolved by the War of the Austrian Succession. These included colonial rivalries between Britain and France, particularly in North America, as well as territorial disputes between Prussia and Austria, which wanted to regain Silesia after it was captured by the former in the previous war. In 1756, Prussia became part of a coalition led by Britain. At the same time, Austria allied with France, which was deeply concerned with the growing power of Britain and wished to curtail it. France and Austria were joined by Saxony, Sweden, and Russia. As the war progressed, the neutral Spanish government became concerned that the string of major French losses at the hands of the British were becoming a threat to Spanish interests. France successfully negotiated a treaty with Spain known as the Family Compact which was signed on August 15, 1761. By an ancillary secret convention, Spain committed to making preparations for war against Britain. In 1762, Spain attacked Portugal. On January 4, 1762, Britain declared war against Spain, and on January 18, 1762, Spain issued their own declaration of war against Britain. On January 6, 1762, the British cabinet led by Prime Minister John Stuart, agreed to attack Havana in the West Indies, and approved Colonel William Draper's scheme for taking Manila with his forces, which were already in the East Indies. Draper was commanding officer of the 79th Regiment of Foot, which was then stationed at Madras in British India. Weeks later, King George III signed the instructions which permitted Draper to implement his scheme, emphasizing that by taking advantage of the existing war with Spain, Britain might be able to assure her post-war mercantile expansion. Manila was one of the most important trading cities in Asia during this period, and the British East India Company wanted to extend its influence over the archipelago. As a result, there was an expectation that the commerce of Spain would suffer a crippling blow. Upon arriving in India, Draper's brevet rank became Brigadier General. A secret committee of the East India Company agreed to provide a civil governor for the administration of the islands, and in July 1762, they appointed Dawson Drake for the post. On August 1, 1762, a British fleet of eight ships of the line, three frigates, and four store ships, sailed away from Madras with a force of 6,839 regulars, sailors and marines. The commander of the expedition was Brigadier General William Draper. The expeditionary force consisted of the 79th Draper's Regiment of Foot, a company of Royal Artillery, 29 East India Company artillerymen, 610 sepoys, and 365 irregulars.
Manila was garrisoned by the lifeguard of the Governor General of the Philippines, the 2nd Battalion of the King's Regiment under Don Miguel de Valdez, Spanish Marines, a corps of artillery, a company of Pampangos, native Filipinos from the province of Pampanga, and a company of cadets. Admiral Cornish's fleet, 14 vessels, of which 10 carried more than 50 guns apiece, anchored in Manila Bay on September 23. A landing was planned two miles south of the city. The three-pronged landing force of 274 Marines was led by Colonel Draper, Center, Major Moore, Right, and Colonel Monson, Left. The next day, they were joined by 632 seamen. On that same day, the British captured Fort Pulverina, located in Malatea district of Manila. The British transformed it into a garrison from where the British forces launched their land offensive against the Spaniards defending Entremuros. Further reconnaissance revealed that the fortifications of Manila were not formidable, in fact they were incomplete. According to British reconnaissance report, in many places the ditch had never been finished, the covered way was out of repair, the glacis was too low, some of the outworks were without cannon. A strong gale started on October 1, cutting off communication with the British fleet. On the morning of October 4, a force of 1,000 Pampangos attacked a recently built cantonment but was beaten back with 300 casualties. After this failure, all except 1,800 of the Pampangos abandoned the city. On October 6, 60 volunteers under Lt. Russell advanced through the breach in the bastion of St. Andrew. Engineers and pioneers followed. Then came Colonel Monson and Major Moore with two divisions of the 79th, the Seamen and then another division of the 79th. During this time, the Mexican-born Archbishop of Manila, Manuel Rojo del Rio e Vieira, acted as the Lieutenant Governor of the Philippines. The former Governor General of the Philippines, Pedro Manuel de Arandia, had died in 1759 and his replacement, Brigadier Francisco de la Torre had not arrived because of the British attack on Havana in Cuba. Because of this, the Spanish crown appointed the Archbishop of Manila as temporary lieutenant governor. Thus, the Spanish defeat was not really surprising. In part, because the garrison was commanded by the Archbishop instead of a regular military commander, many mistakes were made by the Spanish forces. On October 5, 1762, the night before the fall of the walled city of Manila, the Spanish military persuaded Rojo to summon a council of war. Several times the archbishop wished to capitulate, but was prevented. That same day with very heavy battery fire, the British had successfully breached the walls of the bastion of San Diego. In addition they set fire to parts of the town, and drove the Spanish forces from the walls. At dawn of October 6, British forces attacked the breach and took the fortifications, meeting little resistance. During the siege, the Spanish lost three officers, two sergeants, 50 troops of the line, and 30 civilians of the militia, besides many wounded. Among the natives there were 300 killed and 400 wounded. The British suffered 147 casualties, of whom 16 were officers. The fleet fired upon the city more than 5,000 bombs, and more than 20,000 balls. To prevent further casualties, Acting Governor General Archbishop Rojo surrendered both Manila and Cavite to Draper and Cornish. Once Manila fell to British troops, the soldiers turned to pillage. Rojo wrote that the sack actually lasted 40 hours or more. Writing in his journal, Rojo described the events and said, The city was given over the pillage, which was cruel and lasted for forty hours, without accepting the churches, the archbishopric, and a part of the palace. In spite of the orders of the British general, Draper, for it to cease, but the pillage continued. Rojo himself killed with his own hands a soldier he found transgressing his orders, and had three hanged. The British had demanded a ransom of $4 million from the Spanish government to which Rojo now agreed to avoid further destruction. On November 2, 1762, 
Dawson Drake of the British East India Company assumed office as the British Governor of Manila. He was assisted by a council of four. When after several attempts, Drake realized that he was not getting as many assets that he expected, he formed a war council, that he named Chautry Court, with power to imprison anyone. Many Spaniards, Criallos, Mestizos, Chinese, and natives were imprisoned for crimes, that was denounced by Captain Thomas Backhouse, were only known to himself. The British expedition was further rewarded after the capture of the treasure ship Filipina, carrying American silver from Acapulco, and in a battle off Cavite the Santissima Trinidad which carried China goods. The cargo of the Trinidad alone was valued at $1.5 million and the ship at $3 million. In the meantime, the royal audience of Manila had organized a war council and dispatched Don Simon Danda e Salazar to the provincial town of Bulacan to organize continued resistance to the British. The royal audience also appointed Anda as lieutenant governor. That night, Anda took a substantial portion of the treasury and official records with him, departing Fort Santiago through the postern of Our Lady of Solitude, to a boat on the Pasig River, and then to Bulacan. He moved his headquarters from Bulacan to Bacalor, Pampanga, which was more secure, and quickly obtained the powerful support of the Augustinians. On October 8, 1762, Anda, wrote to Rojo, informing him that he had assumed the position of governor and captain general under the statutes of the Council of the Indies which allowed for the devolution of authority from the governor to the audiencia in cases of riot or invasion by foreign forces, as such was the case. Anda, being the highest member of the audiencia not captive by the British, assumed all powers and demanded the royal seal. Rojo declined to surrender it and refused to recognize Anda as governor general. The surrender agreement between Archbishop Rojo and the British military guaranteed the Roman Catholic religion and its episcopal government, secured private property, and granted the citizens of the former Spanish colony the rights of peaceful travel and of trade as British subjects. Under British control, the Philippines would continue to be governed by the Royal Audiencia, the expenses of which were to be paid by Spain and refused to recognize any of the agreements signed by Rojo as valid, claiming that the archbishop had been made to sign them by force, and therefore, according to the statutes of the Council of the Indies, they were invalid. He also refused to negotiate with the invaders until he was addressed as the legal governor-general of the Philippines, returning to the British the letters that were not addressed to that effect. All of these initiatives were later approved by the King of Spain who rewarded him and other members of the Audiencia, who had fought against the invaders. Anda eventually raised an army which amounted to over 10,000 combatants, most of them volunteer natives, and although they lacked enough modern weapons, they were successful in keeping the British forces confined to Manila and Cavite. On November 26, Captain Backhouse dispersed Anda's troops from Pasig and soon after, established a post manned by Lascars and Sepoys so they could dominate Laguna de Bay. Then on January 19, the following year, 1763, the British sent an expedition commanded by Captain Slay against Bulacan who was reinforced by 400 Chinese after Anda ordered their massacre. In Bulacan alone 180 Chinese had been murdered in cold blood or had hanged themselves in fear. The British took Malo loss on January 22 but failed to advance upon General Anda in Pampanga and withdrew from there on February 7. In the spring of 1763, Backhouse undertook another expedition against Anda, advancing as far as Batangas. Cornish and the East Indies Squadron departed in early 1763, leaving two frigates behind. On July 24, news arrived of the cessation of fighting, and on August 26, a preliminary draft of the Peace of Paris was made. The treaty stated that all conquests not known about at the time of the signing of the treaty were to be returned to the original owners. The impasse continued in Manila however, 
as the British order to withdraw would not arrive for another six months, and and reinforced his blockade of the city. During the final winter of the British occupation all pretense of cooperation amongst the British leaders was abandoned. The Seven Years' War ended with the signing of the Treaty of Paris on February 10, 1763. At the time of the signing, the signatories were not aware that Manila had been taken by the British, and consequently, it fell under the general provision that all other lands not otherwise provided for be returned to the Spanish crown. After Archbishop Rojo died in January 1764, the British military finally recognized Anda as the legitimate governor of the Philippines, sending him a letter addressed to the Royal Audiencia Gobernadora e Capitania General after which Anda agreed to an armistice on the condition that the British forces withdraw from Manila by March. However, the British finally received their orders to withdraw in early March, and by mid-March the overdue Spanish governor for the Philippines, Brigadier Don Francisco de la Torre, finally arrived. This Spanish governor brought with him orders from London for Britain and back house to eventually hand over Manila to himself. Drake departed Manila on March 29, 1764, and the Manila Council elected Alexander Dalrymple Provisional Deputy Governor. The British ended the occupation by embarking from Manila and Cavite in the first week of April 1764. The 79th Regiment finally arrived Madras on May 25, 1765. Please leave a comment below. If you find this video informative and helpful, please give it a like and share with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so that you will not miss any of our new videos. Thanks for watching.